Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health and nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side. Our number 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the Longevity products or Longevity business, formulations, ingredients, skin health questions, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we'll get your calls at the bottom of the hour, as we always do in the program. If we've left you on hold in the past, tell our call screener, and we'll get you first up at 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, please head over to our website, our websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. That's criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, and brightsideben.com. You can order longevity products right off of the websites. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites as well for a one-time $25 fee. You can join me in my mission to educate the world about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. If you're an entrepreneur or you like the entrepreneur lifestyle, if you want to make your own hours, work out of the home, if you just want to get your products at the wholesale price, all for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a business of your own. Work out of the home, make your own hours, make as much money or as little money as you want, and help change the world while you're doing it. Help change the world. At the most fundamental level, the level of health, if you enjoy health, if you enjoy nutrition, if you found that nutrition has saved or changed your life, you can change others' lives as well and make money while you're doing it. Call 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470, the Brightside Ben phone team. They can tell you all about it. Or you can sign up right off the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products, Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Serum, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and Truth Balm, all vitamin C rich, and our Truth Retinol 5% Gel made with the highest amount of retinol you're going to find anywhere. And for most folks, it's not even going to cause you any irritation if you've tried to use retinol in the past or retinoic acid in the past, which are go-to standard high-powered anti-aging ingredients. The major anti-aging ingredient in skincare is going to be retinol along with vitamin C. If you've tried to use uh, retinol in the past and couldn't, you might want to try our retinol 5% gel. You can find out all about it at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, water, oil, silicon, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, welcome back to the bright side, friends. Yesterday we left off talking about monosodium glutamate, MSG, the food additive additive that has made it possible for us to process foods to a degree that would be pretty much impossible without 
Cosmo without it. I don't think you'd have a processed food industry like we have today without MSG and substances like MSG. Processed foods tend to be high energy foods without the nutrients that are required for that energy to be efficiently used. Unlike natural foods, whole foods, which have the energy balanced with the micronutrients in just the right amounts. Processed foods give us big surges of energy. They may help us get they may help us get through the day or in the short term, but in the long term, because they're nutrient depleted plus high energy, they're going to have a net anti-health effect. Aside from water and fiber, which are inert, they have no biochemical activity, food is made up of two major components, two major biochemically active components. They're called macronutrients, which are proteins and fats and carbohydrates, and micro nutrients, vitamins and minerals. The macronutrients are present in large amounts, grams or perhaps milligrams, depending on how much you're eating. Micronutrients are found in tiny amounts, micrograms and milligrams. That's your vitamins and minerals. The macronutrients give you the raw energy. That's the protein and fats and carbs. The micronutrients allow the body to use the energy. And that's what a natural food has. It has just the right amount of micronutrients to help the body use the macronutrients. That's why it's a perfect food. A junk food or a processed food is a food that has these two factors uh, separated, has lots of, ma lots of macronutrients, but the micronutrients have been taken out and sometimes replaced artificially. All the electrical energy in the, uh, in the macronutrients, the fats and the proteins and the carbohydrates, ultimately comes from the sun. The sun streams electrical energy to the earth, plants catch that electrical energy and they transform that or tra catch that solar energy and they transform that solar energy into electrical energy. So the sun beams down, the plants catch the sun, catch the solar energy and turn that sun energy into electricity. And then they blend that electricity with minerals from the earth in combination with nitrogen from bacteria. And from all of that, they make carbs and they make fats and they make protein and they make vitamins. The minerals come from the earth. They're not made by the plants, but the plants do transform those minerals into a special form, a plant derived mineral, as we call them, that the body can use. The bodies of animals and, plant, uh, animals and humans can use these plant derived minerals. So the vitamins and the minerals make up the micronutrients. We call them the, the mighty 90 essential nutrients and they act to direct or channel the energy from your proteins and fats and carbs into the right chemical reactions that are required to run the body. The best foods, the highest electrical energy foods, the most electron rich foods, that's what electricity is, it's electrons, are going to be living or as close to alive as possible. In the book Foodopoly, food policy activist Winona Hunter says that uh, uh, 90% of American calories come from processed foods. That is foods that didn't exist 200 years ago. That is foods that are super high in macronutrients but don't have the micronutrients that we need to use the macronutrients. Processed food is a synonym for dead food. In other words, processing food equals death food. The death of the food and ultimately the death of an organism that tries to survive on that processed food. That's us. And in large part, are disastrous and epic health, health uh, crisis in this country and around the world come from the fact that we're all subsisting on foods that didn't exist 200 years ago. Factory foods, processed foods. Processed foods trick the body into thinking that a food is valuable. The energy contained in processed foods, which is a result of its sugar content mostly and its fat content, tricks the body, fools the body and the brain into thinking that that food is valuable. All human beings naturally gravitate towards live foods. We naturally love live and living foods. Foods that are naturally high energy with vitamins and minerals that allow us to use that energy. Unprocessed foods with high energy are normally going to have lots of vitamins and minerals. That's how nature works. Foods that have high energy like sugar, the sugar plant or the sugar cane has the micronutrients, the vitamins and minerals that allow us to use the sugar. The only way for food processors to get us to buy and eat dead processed food is to fake us out, is to stick high energy chemicals into that food. Sugar, of course, is the classic high energy compound that food processors use. And the sugar in these kinds of foods, the bars and the cereals and the juices and the soda pop and the desserts and the breads account for their high popularity because the body loves high energy. So the sugar tricks us into thinking that we're getting a valuable food, tricks our brains.
All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll continue when we come back from our break. 844-236-6010 is our number. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. We're back on the bright side. Pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today or the longevity products or a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com. Or pharmacistben.com. You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470 and order your Beyond Tangy Tangerine or Healthy Star Pack or Fucoid Z or Ultimate Nightly Essence or Ultimate Selenium or Ultimate Niacin or any of the fine longevity products you hear advertised, advertised or recommended on the Bright Side. You can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. Call 866-735-2470 or... Sign up right off the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. So, we love sugar, and food processors know we love sugar. Our brain is hardwired to find that sugar, and if you stick sugar in anything, it's probably going to taste delicious. The only way for food processors to eat dead food, highly processed food, is to stick sugar into it or some other high-energy compound. This is why sugar is everywhere. It tricks our neurology. It tricks our brain into thinking the food is valuable. So we will endlessly crave that food. It is everywhere. A cup of Campbell's tomato soup has five teaspoonfuls of sugar. Same with a bowl of raisin bran. In fact, most children's cereals will get you a cup of most uh, of most children's cereals will get you as much sugar as you'll find in three chip uh, three chips of hoy's chocolate chip cookies. If you want, you can actually get chocolate chip cookie cereal, Keebler chocolate chip cookie cereal, a bowl of Keebler chocolate chip, uh, chocolate chip cookie cereal, yum yum, will get you nearly 27 teaspoonfuls of sugar in a bowl of chocolatey delicious Keebler chocolate chip cookie cereal made by Kellogg's. Or if you're health conscious, you can get Special K chocolatey delight cereal. That's about 30% sugar, 24 teaspoonfuls per bowl. Ketchup is 25% sugar. The can of Coke has 42 grams of sugar. That's eight and a half teaspoonfuls of sugar. Oh, and what's that? You say, I only eat healthy. I don't eat sugar. I hear that all the time. I don't eat any sugar. Sugar's everywhere, folks. A cup of yogurt has five teaspoonfuls of sugar. A Power Bar has five te teaspoonfuls of sugar. A Burger King Whopper has two and a half teaspoonfuls of sugar. Sonic Onion Rings, family size, has more than 10 teaspoonfuls of sugar. Teriyaki chicken from the Cheesecake Factory, 19 teaspoonfuls of sugar. It is everywhere. If we like a food, it's the sugar. If we like a processed food, a boxed food, a fast food, guaranteed, it's the sugar. You can put sugar on any type of unappetizing, dead processed food. It's going to taste good because sugar is electrically active. And the same, by the way, with fake flavorings. There are PhDs, the smartest people in the world who work for food processing companies who study the kind of chemistry it takes to make us addicted to their food. There's a place in Philadelphia called the Manel Institute, funded by food companies and pharmaceutical companies. They're in cahoots, the food companies and the pharmaceutical companies. They're selling us cheap chemicals and purporting uh, and, and somehow pretending that these cheap chemicals are healthy, whether it's a drug that's supposed to be healthy for us or a processed food that's supposed to be healthy for us. And these PhDs that work at the Manel Institute know more about our brains than we do. They know more about our hot buttons than we do. And they come up every day with new chemicals that make us addicted to their food, that assure that we will not be able to stop eating the Doritos. This is how MSG works. MSG, as we said yesterday, glutamate, it's a glutamate, monosodium glutamate, and glutamates, like sugar, are highly electrically active. Glutamates function as electrical substances, electrical chemicals in our brain. Their very function is to excite electrical energy in the brain. This is its role. It's an excitatory chemical. Unfortunately, when it's inserted into what we eat as an additive and ingested as such, it can be too excitatory. This is what the term excitotoxin means. Excito means it stimulates electrical, uh, electrical energy. 
Unfortunately, the toxin part refers to the fact that the brain is looking for good electrical energy that's found naturally in high, food, high, uh, high energy living foods. It doesn't want to be excited by industrially processed chemicals. That's where the toxic comes from. It's a fake energy. MSG is fake energy. The electrical energy that's associated with these excitotoxins is in our brain. It's not in the food. It doesn't give us energy. It just tricks us into thinking we're getting energy. It's the ultimate fraud. It pretends to be energy. It pretends to, that the food has a high energy value, and so the brain gets all excited, but we don't get any energy from it. We just get, uh, we just get uh, pure calories. We don't get energy that we can use. It's a way of making the brain think that it's eating an electrically active food. First excitotoxins were used on processed meats, the ultimate example of dead foods. Even today, there's no way you would ever eat bologna and salami and processed meats if they weren't chemically enhanced with salt and sugar and excitotoxins, which serve to imitate the electrical energy that's found in real foods. Living food, or as close to living as possible, is electricity rich, electron rich. And all that electricity, as we say, comes from the sun. Albert Sens Georgi, the, the man who discovered the vitamin C molecule, said all life is driven by an electrical current that is sent to us from the sun. A vegetable picked out of the ground contains electrical energy a, wilt, a wilted vegetable doesn't have. If you've ever made a juice and you've watched the particles settle to the bottom of the glass as your juice sat on the counter, or even in the refrigerator over the course of a day or two, You've witnessed the loss of energy, the loss of electrical energy that occurs over time. When the juice is freshly made, electrical energy and electrical forces in that juice or in that vegetable keep the vegetable particles suspended. A fresh juice that you just comes right out of your Vitamix or right out of your juicer is filled with electrical energy. When you drink it, you're literally drinking electrical energy. You're really literally drinking electrons when you drink a fresh vegetable juice. That's why it's so refreshing. That's why you can use vegetable juices for fasting or for calorie restriction because you're getting electrical energy without a lot of calories. Electrical energy has no calories. Calories are a representation of heat and occasionally calories can have some electrical energy associated with them. But for the most part, the foods we eat have electrical energy that we can't use. A vegetable's got electrical energy that's very usable. When you make a juice, that electrical energy, that usable electrical energy can be vis visually witnessed by the suspension of the particles in the juice. It all looks like a homogenous unit. Over time, as that energy disperses into the environment, it loses its energy. And this is true about any food that's not fresh. Over time, it loses its energy. Over time, it becomes less and less live. When we say a food is fresh, what we really mean it has a lot of electrical energy. Fresh means electricity. Processed means less electricity. And this is the problem with processed foods. It's electrically depleted. Now, you could put all kinds of chemicals in there. Food processors put all kinds of chemicals to trick us, and MSG is one of them. But that doesn't mean it's going to be an electrically valuable food. MSG is manufactured in super large scale. It's used everywhere. It's used in canned foods, dry mixes, sauces, ketchup, mustard, especially in meats, especially in processed foods. It's also used in Asian foods. This is what accounts for Chinese restaurant syndrome, which we talked a little bit, a little bit about yesterday. Chinese restaurant syndrome was first discovered back in the, in the mid-60s. A guy named Dr. Robert Ho Man Kwok wrote a letter to the New England Journal of Medicine in 1968 claiming that he, quote, experienced a strange syndrome whenever he, I eat out in a Chinese restaurant, unquote. All right, we'll continue when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We will return right after this. We are back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you. If you have questions about uh, MSG or processed foods, if you're trying to lose weight and you can't, if you have questions about the longevity products or health challenge perhaps you're dealing with or a loved one is dealing with and you want help, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about our Truth Skin Health products, which you can find out all about, <coughs> excuse me, at truthtreatments.com, or if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. We have lines open, and we'll get your calls here in just a moment. From Loyola University, 
Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and Huntington's disease share a common crucial feature. No kidding. This is from Octa Neuropathologica. Apparently, they're now discovering that the same kind of biochemical dysfunction, the same kind of biochemical degeneration occurs in Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and Huntington's disease. I have said this forever. All diseases are the same thing. It doesn't matter where it's occurring. In terms of brain diseases, it doesn't matter where it's occurring in the brain. If it's occurring in the front of the brain, the back of the brain, the left of the brain, the right of the brain, it's still degeneration of the brain. So now scientists publishing in Acted Neuropathologica agree. They find that misfolded, misfolded protein clumps invade healthy brain cells, whether you're dealing with Alzheimer's or whether you're dealing with Parkinson's or whether you're dealing with Huntington's. Of course they do. Of course it's the same thing. The misguided protein clumps are the problem. It's not the part of the brain that's the problem. What is it that causes the protein clumps? It's a, a way that the body is correcting deterioration and degeneration. It's a Band-Aid. It's filler. It's cement. It's grout. Unfortunately, that cement and that grout and that Band-Aid interfere with the electrical energy of the brain. The problem is not the, fo uh, the protein folds. The problem is not the amyloid plaques. The problem is not the clumps. The problem is the deterioration that precedes the clumps. And the deterioration in the brain is caused by the same thing that causes deterioration in any tissue. Toxicity, a lack of nutrition, i.e. the mighty 90 essential nutrients, and hypoxia or low levels of oxygen, period. The only three things that cause degenerative disease, nutrition or lack thereof, oxygen or lack thereof, and toxicity, too much of it. And sugar counts as toxicity, by the way, and so do prescription drugs. That means prescription drugs lead to degenerative diseases. You don't need to study. You don't need a research article to tell you that. You just need to understand the, the basic mechanisms of the body. This is the problem with doctors. They don't understand the basic mechanisms of the body. That's why they think it's justifiable to use a prescription drug to make you better. If you understand just basic biochemistry, just basic anything, just basic common sense, you understand that when you put a toxin into the body, You've now put more, put more stress into the body. You've now made the body weaker, not stronger. That's really what it's all about. Prescription drugs make the body weaker, not stronger. And only a medical professional can think differently. A, a, a lay person who doesn't have a medical background will say, of course, a poison is going to make my body weaker. A doctor will say, oh, no, but it will lower your, 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 uh, your uh, LDL levels. Oh, but it'll change your TSH levels. Oh, but it'll change your BMD, your bone mineral density levels. Oh, but it'll change your blood sugar levels. Not you're taking a poison and it's going to make your body weaker. It's going to change your test scores. That's the problem with the medical model in a nutshell. All right. From uh, the journal Anthrozoos, the journal of the International Society of Anthrozoology, free-range eggs seen as tastier, more nutritious, and safer study says people choose to buy free-range eggs because they believe they taste better and are better quality than eggs from caged hens, and theoretically they are. A free-range egg, a free-range chicken, or an egg that comes from a free-range chicken is an egg that comes from a chicken that's allowed to wander around the, uh, around, wander around the farm and peck at worms and eat things that chickens normally eat rather than the grains and the, and the soy and all the other things that they give chickens when they're caged. Problem is, a farm, uh, 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 a farm is allowed to be a free-range farm. Birds raised for, for meat and for eggs can be sold as free range if they've only been allowed, if they've only been in the free range for five minutes a day. If they open the door for five minutes a day, the farm is allowed to say that it's free range. If they're in the, in the cage 23 hours and 55 minutes and they're out five minutes, they're still supposedly free range. So free range doesn't necessarily mean free range. Nonetheless, free range is always going to be better depending on how long the, the chicken is out, then a cage of uh, uh, free-range eggs for, then, uh, from chickens that are free-range than chickens that are in a cage. And by the way, vegetarian ch uh, eggs is a scam because that just means corn and soy and grain. And chickens don't like, uh, uh, their natural diet is not corn and soy and grain. Their natural diet is worms and protein and omega-3 fats, worms having omega-3 fats in them. Lastly, from the journal Menopause, study confirms benefits of fennel in reducing post-menopause symptoms. I love fennel. fennel. Fennel is just this delicious herb. You guys probably have heard of fennel, but it's also very, very medicinal. Make fennel tea. 
If you're dealing with menopausal symptoms, first of all, you have an adrenal issue. So you got to calm the body down. You got to get off of the sugar, which spikes adrenal activity. Low blood sugar does. So laying off the sugar and working on adrenal health is the best way to reduce or completely eliminate menopausal symptoms, slow deep breathing techniques, muscle relaxation, using adrenal nutrients like vitamin B5 and vitamin C and zinc, liquid adrenal extract, vitamin B12. These are all very important for adrenal health, essential fats, essential fatty acids are amazingly important for not only for the adrenal glands, but also for menopausal symptoms. Essential fatty acids can have an estrogen like effect in a good way. But you can also use herbs, fennel, black cohosh, blue cohosh. These are also licorice, damiana, D-A-M-I-A-N-A, -A, Vitex. These are herbs that can have uh, very beneficial effects for folks, for women who are dealing with uh, some of the unpleasantries associated with menopause. Now, according to this study, published in the journal Menopause, fennel can actually be effective in the management of post-menopausal symptoms, including hot flashes, sleeplessness, vaginal dryness, and anxiety without serious side effects. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Let's go to Mississippi and welcome Everett to the bright side. Good morning, Everett. Morning, Ben. How are you making it? I I'm doing good. How about you, my friend? Oh, pretty good. I, I, uh, I had cataract surgery Um about five years ago, in the last session that I was in with the doctor, he took his laser and shot down. Uh, that's what they call it, shooting down the, the floaters. But the, the floaters didn't hit the bottom. They just kept floating. So mm. you're you, floating. You help me with. Yeah, floaters are a sign floating. that the yeah flo floaters are a sign of degeneration of the tissue in the eye. You're start. You're actually seeing pieces. You're 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 actually trying to to see whatever you're looking at through little pieces of degeneration that are floating around in the eye. Thus, the term floaters. So it's a a, a sign of deterioration and degeneration, and you just got to start building things up again. And you got to do the same thing that we all have to do, whether we're symptomatic or not. That is number one: reduce your intake of foods that cause toxicity, and that's sugar mostly. If you're on prescription drugs, that can mess things up. Processed foods in general can be a problem. Calories can also be a problem. So going calorie restriction or going low calorie or ketogenic can help you. High fat, uh, low carbohydrate and low calorie, moderate protein. You might want to explore the ketogenic diet. Use nutrients that are specific for electrical energy. Zinc, selenium, magnesium, vitamin E. Vitamin E is unspeakably important for the eyes. Hang on, Everett. We'll, uh, we'll finish up when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll return right after this. Right side, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Everett in Mississippi. Everett, you there, my man? Yes, sir. I wanted okay. to ask you something, if you don't mind. Um, yeah? I, I watch my diet very carefully. No sugar, no carbohydrates. It's almost a salad every day. And, uh, okay. So I'm trying to get my LDL doing? level down. And, well, uh, don't worry about your LDL. That's just, you don't have to worry about your LDL. That's just medical nonsense. What you got to do is worry about your body breaking down. And I'm not, I'm not there watching you eat, so I can't tell what you're doing or what you're not doing. But I can tell you that if you have floaters, that means your body's breaking down. That's the definition. A floater is basically uh, light coming through the eyes that's hitting fibers and, and clumps and debris that are in the middle part of the eye. It's called the vitreous humor. It's a jelly, gooey part that makes up your eyeball. When that breaks down, all kinds of debris starts to form and fibers. And when the light comes into your eyes, it has to filter through all that debris. So basically, it's like arthritis of the eye. It's the same kind of breakdown. Uh, and the tissue is actually very similar. So I don't know what you're eating, what you're not eating, what you're supplementing, what you're not supplementing. But I can just tell you, if you got floaters, the body's breaking down. Your eyes are breaking down, and probably other parts of your body are breaking down too. So what you got to do is you got to focus on why. There's three elements why. There's only three. There's only three elements why the body breaks down. This is so simple, you guys. It's a lack of nutrition, it's a lack of oxygen or delivery of oxygen. It could be inflammation that's impeding the flow of oxygen and uh, some kind of toxicity. 
Now, it's great that you're eating salads, but you might be having some problem with salads, for all I know. Tomatoes can be a problem for people. Uh, uh, potatoes can be a problem for people. Nightshades are a problem for people. Peppers are a problem for people. It's, it's hard to say. So what you got to do is you got to focus on how you're feeling after you eat a certain food. That's the only way to know. Get yourself on all the Mighty 90s. Of, I'm sorry. Let me just finish real quick here. a lot here. of diarrhea. Well, there you go. <laughs> diarrhea is a sign that the body's trying to eliminate something. Diarrhea is one of the body's protective mechanisms. It's a sign that the body is not absorbing something it should be absorbing or it's trying to eliminate something it doesn't want to absorb. So that's a major clue. Uh, that could also have to do with malabsorption of fats and minerals, which will definitely affect your eyes. So if you're losing electrolytes, you're losing minerals in your diarrhea, you're not absorbing minerals, you're not absorbing uh, your uh, vitamin A and vitamin D and vitamin E and fatty vitamins, that could easily be a problem. So you've got to correct the digestive thing. You, if you're already laying off the sugar, so I'm not, going, I'm not going to talk to you about that, but you can use nutrients that support sugar metabolism, and many of these are electrical, and they'll help you with your eyes. As I was saying before the break, zinc, magnesium, and vitamin E are very important for eye health. They're also very important for helping the body process sugar. Uh, alpha lipoic acid and selenium might help you, 400 milligrams of alpha lipoic acid a day, 400 micrograms or even 600 micrograms of your ultimate selenium a day, do your fucoid Z. Oh. When you're eating your salads, make sure you're mixing your salads with a little bit of coconut oil or, or vegetable, some kind of oil, fresh oil, a good oil, and then uh, salt also uh, sometimes can help improve the palatability of your salad, but the oil will help extract nutrients from the uh, vegetables. Those nutrients that are extracted from the vegetables tend to be fatty and they tend to be pigmentatious or colored. And these pigmented uh, nutrients that come out in the fats and the, uh, and the electrical nutrients that come out of the fats and the, the minerals and such and the, and the fatty vitamins will help your eyes also. So there's lots of strategies so you can... A, go ahead. There's not a lot to do about where I'm at right now. Just, uh, just Same thing to... we all have to do. Now, if you want to throw in some eye vitamins, go get yourself some of the Occutive from Longevity and the uh, Vision FX from Longevity. But I would be doing the same basic things that you... I would, if you called me and said, I have arthritis, I would tell you exactly the same thing. Any degenerative health challenge requires the same kind of basic protocol, and uh, floaters are representative of a degenerative challenge in the eye, and the fact that you had cataracts before tells me that you're breaking down. And that's not, I'm not saying that to beat you up. I'm breaking down, too. We're all breaking down, but I you know, don't want to do it at an accelerated pace. All right, Everett, I'm going to motivate here. Thank you so much for your call, brother. I hope we helped you out. Take care, man. Okay. Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to hang up on you there. All right, uh, let's move on to um, R.C. in California. I've been holding on forever there, R.C. Thank you. What's going on? Hey, good morning, Ben. Uh, good morning. It's a pleasure to listen to you. Learn something new every day. Hey, I appreciate it. I, I got some powdered DHEA. Uh, okay. Tastes like, it tastes awful, doesn't it? Well, I put it in my my smoothie, my Ooh. wife's in my smoothie every morning. But yeah, okay. they said get a digital scale and, and because you don't want to take too much. And I want to get your take on it. They're recommending 25 milligrams a day. And I, this digital scale doesn't do so 25 milligrams. Dec- Pardon me? The decimal you're not, point. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to get 25 milligrams measured in, in most digital scales. You've got to get a super high-tech, expensive digital scale to do 25 milligrams. What does is, what is your digital yeah, scale well, go to? It goes. Uh, all, it carries out to the uh, two places to the right of the of the decimal point. So yeah, that's that's not. You're not going to be able to read 25 milligrams that way. Um, how about 50 milligrams? Would it be 0. 0.05? Correct. Correct. It would be okay. 0. 0.05. Okay, I've been doing like 0. 0.40. <laughs> that's 400 milligrams. Yeah, that's way too much. Yeah, that's way too much. You could throw things off. DHEA is not a nutrient. It's a hormone. And so right. you've got to be really careful with the dose. 400 milligrams is way too much. And you're not going to be able to get an accurate measurement with your scale. If you really want to do it right, you should get invest in a scale that's, that can measure 25 milligrams. And those are going to cost you $1,000 or more. Oh, so, okay. yeah, I wouldn't do it that way. Just go buy 25. DHEA is cheap. Go buy 25 yeah. milligram capsules for like 10 bucks or 15 bucks and do 25 milligrams a day. That's what I would do because you're gonna so you're I, not gonna get an accurate measurement. Go ahead. Okay, I, I started out with taking uh, putting in 10 10 mil, uh, uh, well like 0.19. That's 190 milligrams. 0.19. Yeah. So that, but I split that up between my wife and me. We've That's, been taking it now about five days. How do you feel? So now I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna. Uh, turn it back to that 0.05 because it can measure that. 
If you can 0. do 0.05, 0. but you, it's not going to be exactly 0.05 because it's give or take something. There's a margin of right. error on there. Well, so I'm, I, not, I'm not worrying about it. I mean, I feel great. My wife helps. That's the most important thing. That's the most yeah, important I thing, mean, RC, is that you feel great. If you start to lose your hair, you get acne or oily skin or jittery or have insomnia, those are signs that you've got to back down a little bit. No, no, we haven't had any of those problems. But just, okay. just uh, So it can measure out to that 0.05. Oh, there's just two places. Okay, good deal, man. I Personally, I would just buy the 25 milligram capsules, but if you want to do it that way, let me know how you do. I'd like to know how you're doing on that, on your, uh, on your high dose of uh, DHEA. Well, All right, man, I know, I, I'm, I'm going to go wind ahead. it down now because I, I, after what you told me. That's what yeah, I'm you don't want to take too much DHEA. All right, RC, I'm going to let you go here. I want to get a couple more calls in. Thanks right, for calling. Thank Appreciate you, it. Take Thanks care, man. Clear. Bye-bye. Uh, all right, uh, Pam in Michigan, what's going on? Welcome to the Bright Side, Pam. Good morning, Ben. You are an encyclopedia of information. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, my gosh. And I'm electronically addicted. You know my, my story. I've been on the antidepressants for 20 years and the Motrin and the Prilosec for 15 years. So. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so I've been um, addicted to sugar. But I was out of the sugar for two years, and I thought that would be enough, but it surely was not. So I'm calling today to find out um, your take on molasses. Well, I love it. Molasses, yeah, molasses is awesome stuff. That's the stuff that they don't use when they're making sugar, the iron and the, and the minerals, the copper and all the good stuff that's in the sugar plant, which, by the way, the sugar plant is really got lots of nutritional value, the sugar plant itself. The problem is when we extract the sugar and we separate the sugar out from everything else, including the molasses, we lose the nutritional value. The nutritional value is largely in the molasses. The molasses doesn't have a lot of sweet flavor to it, but it's got some really, really interesting, powerful nutritional value, especially Especially when it comes to minerals, I mean, it is a really, it's a source, of, a good source of calcium. It's a good source of iron. It's a good source of magnesium and good source of, uh, uh, sort of good source of zinc. Not a great source of zinc, but it's a great source of copper. I mean, it's just it, it, selenium. It, it's an amazing, amazing uh, food, I guess you would call it. Uh, and definitely enjoy your molasses. I would. Uh, it's not super sweet. Doesn't have a whole heck of a lot of sugar, but it's a little bit sweet, so you can use it kind of for a sweetener. But it's definitely a great source of nutrients, particularly minerals. Also, you'll get uh, a little bit of B vitamins in there as well. So I'm, I'm a fan of molasses. All right, Pam, I'm going to see if I can get one more call in. Thank you so much for your call. I appreciate the kind words too. God bless you. All right, Shauna in Idaho, you get the last word. Good morning. What's going on? Hey, Ben, you made me so powerfully motivated. I oh, I appreciate like that. After yeah, thank you. you. What's going um, on? I'm wondering about Asian flu. Does it come from chicken? Uh, birds carry viruses, that's for sure. Uh, and chicken, you mean eating chicken? Not eating chicken, it's not going to come from. Is that what um, you're talking about? From raising chickens? Yeah. Yeah, there's all kinds of stu- nasty things that birds carry with them that human beings are not supposed to contact. And yes, it can definitely, they thought it, they think it originated from chickens in China. Uh, the great Asian flu pandemic of the 1950s, they isolated it to, to chickens. So I don't, I don't know if all Asian flu comes from chickens, but it originally did. Uh, the, that's what the story is anyway. Got to go. Thank you so much for your call, Sean. I appreciate it. God bless you. And I uh, hope, uh, hope we helped you out. Thanks for listening, friends, to The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Check out our website, truthtreatments.com, and all our truth treatment products, Truth Retinol Gel, Truth Balm, Truth Serum, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. And please sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team. Help change the world with the power of nutrition. Call 866-735-2470. That's the Bright Side Ben phone team. Or sign up right off the website. It's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have an awesome, wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.